Okay, welcome everyone to another episode of 0365A. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to be speaking with um, our uh, Cloud Interop partners uh, from Blue Jeans, and we have uh, Ted Fox here from Blue Jeans. And so uh, maybe, Ted, uh, tell us about yourself. Uh, yeah, I've been with Blue Jeans for about six years almost. Uh, we, uh, I've been uh, in the product management field for about 10 years, uh, working on anything from mobile to different Microsoft technologies. Awesome. So, um, given that you're one of the three cloud interop partners, uh, maybe tell us about your product um, uh, and your platform. Sure. So we're we're calling it Blue Jeans Gateway for Microsoft Teams. Pretty original, um, but mainly uh, we're a we're a cloud video interop provider, like you mentioned. But we're based mainly in the cloud. Our strategy as a company is cloud first. So we started in the cloud, we're bred, we're bred in the cloud, and we uh, we innovate in the cloud. So everything is is mainly developed around a whole cloud first scenario. And this was just right up our alley because uh, you know we started as a video interop company for consumer Skype video meetings back in 2009. So this is kind of cool for us to jump into. So you've come from sort of like this consume, consumer side of things, and then did you sort of go into the Skype for Business uh, space and then now into Teams, or is it uh, just sort of like a jump over? No, we have our own uh, meetings and event service. Uh, one is called Blue Jeans Meetings, and the one's called Blue Jeans Events. Uh, and we went from doing the Skype video interop uh, for the consumer Skype to our own platform. That's all cloud-based, and then uh, we also wanted to provide ways to provide more interop, and this was a great uh, avenue to do that. And of course, it's like it's like a Microsoft's an old friend of ours, so it was easy to uh, to jump back into this. Awesome. So, what is the what is the business focus? Um, mainly, the business focus for us is to be able to get any endpoint into a video interaction. Um, that's where the, the whole mantra of the company goes through. So uh, we don't believe that you need to have a, a, an expensive and hard and, and heavy lift manageable on-prem solution to do anything. So what we've done as we start as a company, we take it, we've taken that whole idea of on-prem and, and management infrastructure and put it all in the cloud. And then from, from there, we wanted to be able to be agnostic to endpoint. Uh, so from the time we started as a company to today, we work with pretty much any SIP and H323 service. And then on certain ones that offer the capability, we offer that one button to push ease of use. So where all you have to do is schedule the room anywhere on the invite, put a Teams meeting, um, and then uh, bring, you know, bring the room as a resource, hit send. And when you walk into the room, if it, let's say it's a Cisco with a Touch 10, all those meetings will be listed on the uh, touch 10 and then you, all the user has to do is just hit join. They don't have to dial into an IVR. They don't have to enter in a conference ID or attend an ID. It's just literally five seconds right into it. And that way the help desk or the IT department doesn't get that uh, tax as we call it, of uh, sending people out there to help troubleshoot. There's no placards in the room theoretically. And the meeting can start on time. Uh, without that, we call it the video tax also to where people try to figure out the technology in the room. And it usually takes about five to 15 minutes for some people to go, sorry, I'm late. We're trying to dial into the conference and those kind of things. So we're really we're really uh, charged with that mission all over the company. You, you mentioned Cisco, uh, Ted. Tell us about all the different endpoints that you're seeing that are that are connecting into Blue Jeans. Like what do you what do you primarily see and what what you're all compatible with? Sure, of course. Uh, so the big three, Cisco, LifeSize, and Polycom. Um, more Cisco and Polycom uh, these days. Mm -hmm. But we have anywhere, you know, everything but the CTS series from Cisco we have connecting into our service. And then Polycom, we have we run the whole gamut um, of different Polycom endpoints all the way to really old ones. We even have some Tanberg branded uh, endpoints still connecting to our service. And, of course, the LifeSize uh it pretty much every series. The icon seems to be the prevalent one, the icon series. And then uh, we we have a hodgepodge of mixtures of thousands of other endpoints uh, from different manufacturers, such as uh, Avaya, Huawei, Sony, uh, Starleaf, uh, those kind of things. But we support, you know, just through SIP and H323, uh, we support a multitude of devices. Cool. How, and how would you characterize or describe how you might differentiate um, from other players in this space? Um, first off, we got the coolest name ever, Blue Jeans. <laughs> um, 
But otherwise, I think, you know, because we're born in the cloud and bred in the cloud, I think that gives us a, a leg up. I think the other other ones are moving to the cloud in certain aspects. Um, I know the different mo there's different models for each one. So uh, but ours, we're not trying to, to move any hardware. A eh? um, we're just trying to sell the service in the interop. Um, and then the other ones where, you know, it's it's uh, little to no on prem infrastructure at all. So we don't ask you to manage anything besides, you know, if you want one button to push uh, ease of use on a Cisco Lifesize or Polycom, um, then we have a 40 megabyte application that you host in your firewall. And that mainly is outbound only and read only to the to the service. And that pushes the meeting list to the endpoint as well as gives the SIP dial strings. Um, but other than that, it's it's a very lightweight. So you can go from zero to hero. Um, in a full big enterprise, uh, you know, such as, you know, the, the 200,000 person enterprises in about two hours uh, max if you have the right people in the room. Um, so you don't have to have a, uh, you know, a heavy lift to get this uh, deployed, even for POC to full on enterprise deployment. Cool. Thank you. Cool. Hey, Ted, I was, I was wondering, <clears throat> you mentioned uh, quite an ecosystem of endpoints and room systems. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the real life scenarios you see best? Fit are the best, most successful for blue jeans, and and likewise, what are some of the more most chal challenging uh, real life scenarios you see? Yeah, it's a good question. So I think the <laughs> the the normal scenario is you know the the existing IT infrastructure or existing video conferencing infrastructure that they already have in place in that company. So they've already made investments in polycoms or other endpoints, and they've already implemented them with. Uh, you know, like for the boardroom size rooms, they have the ceiling speakers and the microphone arrays and those kind of things. So they just want to be able to work with what they already have without having to spend a lot of money and, uh, you know, pretty much plug and play. And that's that's where we thrive um, as as a video interop. I think the the most challenging places are uh, the flexible spaces when it comes to like training rooms where you have a, a very wide uh, uh, room that's very not too deep. Um, you have multiple camera scenarios, so mainly it's not a heavy lift on us. It's a heavy lift on the customers because they have to know how to operate all that. Um, but to get it into the video conference, I think, is is uh, fairly easy. Um, some of the uh, total immersion uh, video conferencing systems, uh, we work with like the Cisco IX series, but I think it's uh, intimidating uh, for people to go into those. So we find a lot, not a lot of adoption when people roll out this and they have a Cisco IX systems, usually there's like one every few companies. There's not a bunch of them because they're quite, quite expensive, but, uh, but we see those rooms being used less. We see the, you know, the, the middle of the ground rooms being used the most. So, um, you know, SX twenties with touch tens, those kind of things, you know, the, the multitude of rooms, we call it. it, it do you find a follow on question with uh, SIP and H three, two, three, Generally, does that that standard work well for room system interop? Is it do different manufacturers <clears throat> have different little support hooks over and above the the standard, or just generally interops pretty well? It's a good question too. I think uh, uh, it depends on the endpoint, right? So with uh, mm. with Cisco, uh, you get you know SIP and H three two three are kind of like the standard connection, like yeah. kind of like TCP IP. So you get pretty much the same capabilities. I think when it comes to uh, the service itself, that's where you can differentiate. Like while you're in the meeting, um, you can provide different kind of DTMF commands, uh, options, things like that. I think that's where a lot of people are differentiating from there. Um, right. Luckily, a lot of the manufacturers like Cisco's opened up, you know, some of the interface uh, pieces to where you can add little interface uh, buttons and things like that into uh, the endpoint. I think that's something that's exciting for me is that, you know, instead of being so highly competitive where they close everything off, I, I like the fact that they're starting to get more open and understand that, you know, people don't just run one and that's it. Yeah, cool. Thanks. You're welcome. So, so I've been through the uh, direct routing uh, certification process with Microsoft and and BlueJeans obviously got their certification on the cloudy video interop in October 2018. How is that uh, certification process for you guys? Because I think this is my been one of the first certifications that you guys have gone through with Microsoft. Yeah, it's yes. new to the program. Yeah, so it was, it was actually interesting. Like one of the things we we thought, you know, like 
uh, in in my past lives, when you go for a certification, they give you a, a big long document, and they say step one, step two, step three, and you're pretty much responsible for all that. The great part about dealing with Microsoft, we were one of the three video interrupt partners chosen to do this so we got a lot of interaction from them so they we had weekly check-ins to make sure we were hitting the milestones because we'd set some milestones previously and uh we we liked the fact that there was always somebody to contact uh working with other big companies such as this uh usually there's an email that goes to uh, a random box where you're just waiting for the luck of the draw but we actually have people to communicate with and they were very very knowledgeable so nobody really had to say i don't know um, and when we came back to, uh, to ask them a few questions because we wanted, you know, again, part of the go to market is differentiation. We wanted to be able to, to talk about some of these factors and we made sure everything was great with them. Um, but it, it, it was a very easy experience. I'm not going to say easy as in the workload, but it was easy for us to navigate through. Um, but I think the, the best part is, you know, this isn't the first, this isn't the last time we're going to be a Microsoft partner on something. Uh, we, we, we decided that we, we love this ecosystem. Can, can you speak to the sort of the architecture level? So if uh, I'm a customer and I have, you know, the Cisco telepresence room or whatever, and I'm looking to join either a Skype for Business Online meeting or a Teams meeting with voice, video, and content, what would I, what, what services would I need from BlueJeans and how would that kind of look out? So we, we basically only support Teams meetings right now. Um, so that was what Microsoft uh, really wanted to push. So let's say you, you organize a Teams meeting, uh, you invite the room. From the infrastructure and architecture standpoint, everything is hosted in Azure. Um, so we have, uh, right now we have uh, North America presence and European presence and Q1 will have a Asia Pacific presence. So depending on where you're coming from to join that meeting is where you get routed to. And then, uh, but mainly you're just making a SIP call into our video interrupt gateway. And from there, we're dropping you right into the Teams meeting as an endpoint. And then uh, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to have uh, the ability to share from a video conferencing system uh, via HDMI, those kind of things. So from the architecture standpoint, everything's Azure based. Uh, and then from the administrative standpoint, we have a portal on BlueJeans called Command Center. And that's pretty much your one stop shop to register your endpoints to our relay one button to push service and to see uh, different aspects of call metrics and things like that. So we're, we, we think you should be able to minister and deploy from your couch if you have to. Um, and then from the user standpoint, they shouldn't be worried about what technology is behind the service. And, the, and that one uh, button to push service, is that, is that across all the devices? Is it just like a calendaring service where you're, you're modifying the actual invite or? Oh. How is it that you're getting those devices to get that functionality? It's a good question. So part of our interop, our part of our integration with Cloud Video Interop with Microsoft and their and their uh, service or software delivery kit is to be able to insert that room information into the meeting invite. So when you say organize a meeting and send, during that you see the join by Teams uh, that Microsoft provides, and below that we have join by video conference room. And then we offer the underneath there is the uh, dial-in information. So if you have to manually dial it for some reason, you'll have your your UI to, to dial into with your conference ID. Um, but if it's a, a relay connected room, which is our one button to push service, then you don't have to worry about that. We just give you a join button to, to pop right on. Uh, so if you have a, uh, even if you don't have a touch panel, like you have a Cisco SX20, you can use the remote control and scroll and hit the join button from there too. Awesome. Um, any more questions for, for Ted, guys? Uh, just one really high-level question. <clears throat> if sure. I'm a custo customer, I'm looking at to, to purchase the uh, the Blue Jeans Gateway. What's mm -hmm. the licensing model? Like, what? how would it be priced? Not, so, not specific prices, but just what, what is it per user or per yeah, video? So, so by by the way, the, the way you buy office is per user and uh, we do it per user also so the the good part about this is if you have an enterprise that's over 5,000 people let's say and you license the enterprise <laughs> it's actually fairly economical um, as we as you uh, increase user licenses the price goes down considerably so uh, you know starts out uh, at one price but then goes down you know one-tenth of the price if you have 20,000 people right okay 
Cool. Awesome. Uh, well, thanks again, Ted, for uh, joining us today and sharing, uh, you know, your product knowledge and uh, the journey that uh, Blue Jeans has gone to uh, get certified and provide uh, cloud video interop. And uh, um, thanks, everyone, for listening in, and hopefully we'll catch you on the next episode. Thanks, Ted. Thank, Thank you. you.